Hello and good evening. Hope you can hear us well. Hi, Dr. Greed. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Perfect. Thank you uh, for confirming this. It's good to have you here and welcome to our IVF webinar. Again, we are here simply because we want to make sure that you are uh, well taken care of during this COVID-19 uh, times so that we can support you and so that we can help you out even if a bit uh, with, uh, with some information so that you can get familiar with some of the topics on IVF uh, treatments, of course, on various topics so you know this is not our very first event tonight actually probably you know that uh, this is our second uh, event live event tonight and uh, today we have another topic to handle this time it's egg donation and uh, but before we go to the details before we start the presentation let me just uh, show you and thank you thank to to our ambassadors and partners who has been also supporting us with whole stronger together initiative and thanks to them, this is all possible. As you know, we are meeting here every single day from Monday to Friday throughout the whole uh, month, April in such case. And we are here and we will be here just so you can uh, find out some details. But also, this is a great chance for you to meet top experts. And this is a great chance for you to ask your questions and uh, get a bit of advice as well. And with us today, I already mentioned, is uh, Dr. Greet, um, sorry, Greet uh, from, um, not from Eugene, but from Emer Clinic, which is located <laughs> in Valencia, um, Dr. Greet Lamens, and uh, she will today talk about um, a topic on egg donation and when is the time to consider it. Uh, Dr. Greet, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling fine, thank you. Happy to you? hear that. I'm all good right now. We had been, uh, we have, we were having a bit of issues at the beginning with connecting, but now everything is perfect, so all will be good, I am sure. And well, as I've mentioned, we will start with the presentation, and then it will be time for your answers, uh, sorry, questions and answers. Uh, so uh, just remember to type it all in in the chat section and Dr. Greet will answer them for you right after the presentation. And okay, Dr. Greet, are you ready to begin? I'm ready. Perfect. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. First of all, Caroline, thank you for the introduction and thank you for the in invitation. And good evening to everybody, wherever you are. As Caroline told you, my name is Dr. Lamens and I'm a fertility doctor at Imer in Valencia. I welcome you to this webinar from a locked down Spain in the middle of this worldwide Corona crisis. I hope you and your loved ones are doing well and staying put at home or at a safe distance beyond. At Imer, we are working hard to take the right measures to offer you a COVID control center. We have a lot of experience working with infectious patients like HIV, hepatitis B, a knowledge that we are using to redefine our routines, spaces and protocols in order to grant the safety of our patients and our staff. And you are connected to this webinar because egg donation could by now be your only hope left to be a parent. Women are born with a finitive number of eggs and the number declines with age, as does egg quality, especially after 35. So some women in their late 30s and many in their 40s might need to use egg donation. Also, women who have already tried IVF throughout without success or women with multiple miscarriages might find this option helpful. Some younger women may have fewer eggs and greatly diminished ovarian function related to of early ovarian failure or as a result of chemotherapy or ovarian surgery. Donor eggs may, may also be used for fertility treatment by same-sex cu male couples or single males. Finally, certain rare genetic conditions that may be inherited may call for using donor eggs. 
So let me walk you through the reasons that may lead you to decide for egg donation. So I will try to go ahead. So when is it time to think of egg donation? When at one point in your life you feel like you would like to become a parent, you can be lucky or you can find yourself at the start of a long road. Until you are in your mid-30s and you have a regular cycle, you do have a 75% ch chance of a live birth with your own eggs, genetical, genetically identical. Or it could be when that doesn't happen, you go to a fertility clinic and hopefully with ovulation induction, intrauterine insemination or IVF ICSI cycle, you can achieve a live birth, again, with genetically identical uh, from your own eggs. But what if an IVF cycle does not end in a live birth? Or if from the beginning you know you will need an egg donation? At that point, you come at a crossroad. You need to decide what you're going to do. If you want to become, or you still continue to try to become a parent, and then you will need an egg donation, which gives you a 50% chance of a live birth per cycle. A child from an egg of another woman. Or, and that might even be a harder decision, you can decide to stop your fertility efforts, to give up your dreams. There are three causes. I must not forget to change the, um, the slides so you can follow. Uh, there are three main reasons, three causes that can lead to egg, you to egg donation if you want to become a parent after carrying a child yourself. There is, or you have, you do not have any eggs anymore, or your own eggs are deficient, or there is a maternal hereditary disorder, or the fertility road you went down has failed. What can be the reason of not having viable eggs anymore? There can be two main reasons. Or there can be a condition we call a premature ovarian failure, also called premature primary ovarian insuff insufficiency, difficult words, also called POI, or you are of an advanced maternal age. What is a primary ovarian insufficiency or POI? What are the characteristics? Your, your ovaries stop functioning before you turn 40. Your estrogens, your estrogen levels go down. There is no regular ovulation. In other words, you are subfertile. Primary ovarian insufficiency is the main reason, the first reason in the past to develop egg donation. The first birth after egg donation was in 1983-84. That means that children born, the oldest children born from egg donation, are now in their late 30s. What are the symptoms? When, what, what are the symptoms that you can experience and think of, could I, could I have a premature ovarian failure? That can happen when there, is, when there are irregular or skipped periods, when you experience hot flushes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, dry eyes, irritability or difficulty concentrating or a decreased sexual desire.
just one further what how come how can it be that a person has a premature ovarian failure why do your ovaries stop working before they auto stop there are some reasons there can be it could be that you have turner syndrome or fragile x syndrome then you have or no ovaries or very bad working ovaries. There are toxins that are known to damage the ovaries badly. If you have had chemotherapy or radiation for a tumor or an oncological problem in the past, like leukemia or breast cancer, these chemotherapy radiations are common causes of a toxin-induced ovarian failure. These therapies can damage the genetic material in the cells. Cigarette smokes, chemicals, pesticides and viruses might hasten ovarian failure. An immune disease can also be the cause of ovarian failure. In this rare form, your immune system produces antibodies against your ovarian tissue harming the egg containing follicles and damaging the egg. What triggers the immune response is not clear, but exposure to a virus is one possibility. But in 70% of the women who are confronted with a primary ovarian insufficiency, there is no cause that has been found. Then I go there. When are you at risk for having a premature ovarian failure? The risk goes up between the ages 35 and 40. We have several patients under 30 with primary ovarian insuffic insufficiency and are now happy moms of a baby. When you have a family history of a sister or a mother with a primary ovarian insufficiency, then you are at risk of having it at well or developing it in the near future. Ovarian surgery needed for, for instance, endometriosis or PCOS can involve, involving the ovaries, can increase the risk of a primary ovarian insufficiency. I explained to you there are two main reasons for an absence of deficiency of your own eggs. First one was POI, pr premature ovarian insufficiency. The other reason and more frequent reason is an advanced maternal age. In our clinic, 75% of our egg donation patients are older than 40 years old. But what does that mean, advanced age? I know a lot of women in their 50s and 60s, they feel very young, very healthy. But I mean, it's about being of an older age at a stage of reproduction. It's, there are various definitions of specific age and stage of reproduction. It is more increasing age occurring and a declining fertility, it's rather a continuum rather than a threshold. There's not one point, one age after, after which the fertility drops. The declining of the fertility is similar in all women. In some women, the declining goes quicker than in the others. A women's fertility peaks in the early and mid-20s after which it starts to decline. That's a familiar, um, familiar diagram where you see the declining of the chance to become pregnant and the declining of the quality of the eggs. It is important, um, when you see the diagram, uh, when you know the chance to conceive when you are until your mid-20s, as, as I said before, 
is 75% within a year. Is 50 to 40 to 50% when you're 40. But it's only 2% when you're 43. It declines very, very quickly. You must realize that several years before your menopause, menopause being the last period in, that you ever have in your life, that several years before, whether your menopause is at your when you're 52 or 46, there are many years when you have regular cycles, but you do not have good ovulations in these cycles. That means you're less fertile. A lot of women, they say, but I have regular cycles, so I must be very fertile. And that is a misconception. Then, at, I forgot something, something that's important. When you become pregnant over 40, there are substantial risks involved, risks in connection with the quality of your own eggs. There is the risks of pregnancy and advanced age. The miscarriage rates begin to skyrocket in your 40s. At 40, the risk of a miscarriage is 35%. When you're much younger, the risk is 15%. And the miscarriage rate rises to 53% by the age of 45. There are risks of pregnancy complications like high blood pressure and gestational diabetes. These risks increase after 35 and continues to rise in your 40s. There are risks of genetic problems, genetic problems with a baby. At 40, your chance of conceiving a child with Down syndrome is 1 in 100. At 45, it's 1 in 30. This could frighten you, but if you would like to become pregnant with egg donation when you are over 40, that is not a problem because egg donors are women at the peak of their fertility potential. They are age 20, 32. And because of uterine receptivity appears to be unchanged as a woman ages, Pregnancy occurs in greater than 50% of embryo transfers using donated eggs in the setting of a hormonally, hormonally prepared uterine lining. Then we go back. When do we think of egg donation? We think about egg donation in the absence or deficiency of own eggs, which I have explained now. Another reason is when there is a maternal hereditary disorder. Usually a woman knows she has a hereditary disorder. That means she will not try to conceive spontaneously. That means that it could be that IVF ICSI with PGD can be an option in some cases. It depends on the law and the rules, the regulations in your own country. Hereditary disorders are passed down from parents to their children. Women may carry an incurable genetic disease that they do not wish to pass to their future children, such as some of them, thalassemia, cystic fibrosis, tay disease, and so on. There are a lot. At IMER, we offer our patients with egg, who consider egg donation the possibility of comparing the blood of the donor with the blood of the sperm of the partner or the sperm donor and to see if they're possibly they both could possibly be the carrier of one of the more than 330 diseases that we now know can be detected and that we can be a carrier of so this test can diminish the risk of of the risk of a child with a disorder when 
Do you think you need egg donation when you don't have good eggs, when there is a maternal disorder, or when you went to a fertility road and it failed? Or the fertility road has been long, you have been a lot of IVF ICSI treatments, a lot of transfers, or with no pregnancies, or with a lot of miscarriages, or the route has been short, because with the stimulation, it shows that you are a poor responder. Repeated IVF and ICSI failures and multiple, multiple miscarriages, IVF pregnancy reduces IV, excuse me, IVF pregnancy rate reduces when it comes to women of older age. At 38, the number of failures of embryos in planting caused by decreased quality. By the age of 40, 42, the success rate is only 5%. However, at this age, women can still get pregnant using a donor egg and deliver a healthy child. After explaining the reasons, conditions for not conceiving, you come to a crossroad where you ask yourself a very difficult question. Should I carry on and go for egg donation? Or should I stop and give up my dream? As I said, counseling could be a very important factor to help you in your decision. Counseling in your own country, in your own language. The alternative to egg donation is ending the fertility journey. It's one of the most important decisions you can face in assistant reproduction. It is a deliberate process. You need to take time for it before taking this step. You have to ask yourself and be helped to discuss this question. Is egg acceptation good for me and good for us? Which challenges are there to face once the child is born? Egg donation implies acceptation. It's an alternative form of parenthood. It's an alternative for adoption or foster care. It's always a second choice, but certainly not a second rate. It's a process that starts before conception, grows along with the child that will be born out of it, and goes further many years after that. Egg donation implies acceptation. It is important to consider the future and how you, your partner and your child will feel about not knowing the true identity of your child. But you will receive only the necessary information in Spain to carry on with the procedure. However, with sophisticated gene testing and the many online ancestry and genetic websites, future fully anonymity cannot be guaranteed. There are now in the world at least four big databases, databases who invite, who teases people all over the world to send to them some mucus so that they can find out if somewhere in the world there could be somebody genetically linked to them. 21 million people have done it by now. And we expect in two years time it will be 30 million. So it's important to consider that. Egg donation in Spain is a solidary anonymous and altruistic act. Our donors are young women between 18 and 30 years old. 
Thanks to our oocyte and sperm donors, we are able to change the lives of many people. Our donors must undergo a thorough and exhaustive medical, genetic and psychological screening to confirm their good emotional and physical condition, fertility potential and the absence of infectious and hereditary diseases. The selection and matching of the law of the donor is by law the exclusive competence of the medical team. We must ensure the highest possible compatibility of physical and immunological characteristics between the donor and the recipient. Donors by Spanish law should be anonymous to the recipient and vice versa. Be aged between 18 and 35 with a normal body weight and a healthy medical, psychological and genetic history. Only the information necessary to complete the procedure until giving birth will be given to the recipient. We are aware that the fertility journey is demanding and uncertain. A wide range of emotions will be experienced. We truly believed in a personalized support and counseling throughout all the treatment. Quality care is one of our brand values. We aim to build individual relationships where we will always look after your well-being, offering honest and personalized solutions to make your dream of being a parent come true. IMER is part of the family of clinics of the Next Clinics project. In just a few years, Next Clinics has become one of the largest assisted reproduction groups in Europe, with 20 clinics and eight laboratories in nine countries. Commitment to technology, experience and quality care are our core values. We represent a modern alternative to old-fashioned groups, the next generation in the IVF world. Love makes a family. It is our wish that above all, each child born from egg donation may thrive in a family where his origin is a source of happiness. I thank you for your attention. I go back to Caroline. Perfect. Thank you so much for your presentation, for explaining all the details as well. And uh, now, of course, it is time for our Q&A session. And just let me remind you, if you would like to ask anything at all, you can type it in in the chat section so that Dr. Britt can uh, advise and help you out a bit as well. And we do have a few questions uh, already, so let me get to it uh, right now. So here's the very first question for tonight. I was advised by another doctor to try IM map and or ER map tests before moving to egg donation. Could you tell us more about how help helpful those tests are? I was never advised this at my current clinic, although I have a history of many faint IVF attempts. Now, it sometimes, um, it depends. It depends on your history. Um, if you have had several embryo transfers without becoming pregnant, it is a possibility. We call it differently, these tests, but you can go to a test to define if the moment when we transfer an embryo is in the right implantation window or not. That is possible with us, but it completely is dependent of your own details of your history. Perfect. Thank you so much. And of course, just let me remind you that if you would like to get uh, some more details, you can always uh, get in touch with the team, whole team, Dr. Geet and her team, 
this is the link uh, where you can just simply ask uh, some other questions as well okay uh thank you so much and uh, now let me go to the next question so i am looking at possibly uh using an egg donor but she's already booked for her next cycle with another intended parent so how soon should we ideally use an egg donor after her last retrieval for best quality and number of eggs sure um in our clinic it is the donor department um in uh, combination with the medical team who defines which donor is uh, which, sorry I put the telephone out uh, which donor is appropriate for a patient and um, I think um, Angela so I'm sorry I don't see the question very well uh, Angela um that you are talking of synchronizing a donor with a recipient uh, we seldom do um, um we seldom do that because it gives a lot of stress for the recipient and uh, the results are not so good That's what I wanted to answer. Thank you again. Thank you so much for your question as well as your uh, help. Yes, with it, your answer. And uh, now let me go to the next question we have. So do you have any experience about the use of mesenchyme, sorry, stem cell for ovarian rejuvenation? I mean, to establish ovarian reserve. Um, we, the, the, the treatments we do and the tests we perform with patients are all tests that are um, evidence-based and that give the patients a proven better chance for a pregnancy and we do not have any experience with the use of mesenchymal stem cells for ovarian rejuvenation. That was my answer. Perfect. Thank you so much again for your question as well as your uh, answer to it. And there's a longer question. So let's have a look at it. My NK cells have been checked by immunologists. The results are above norm. I was advised to do intralipids or immunoglobulin vaccines. After a few failed attempts, my IVF doctor suggested to quit those therapies because the cost is quite high, because they are not proved to help. How about egg donation with high NK cells? What is your attitude towards this problem and these immunological therapies? Yes. Uh, thank you for your question. Um, there are a lot of um, additional uh, treatments along egg donations, and one of them is um, intralipid um, immunoglobulin vaccines. Uh, we do not do that. There is not enough uh, evidence that it will make your chances better or greater to conceive. That's so far my answer. All right, thank you so much again for uh, that question as well as your uh, answer, okay? And then uh, there is another question. Uh, so how long should a breastfeeding mother wait to go through an egg donor cycle? I do not understand the question very well. Uh, so, so, meaning you uh, and Madam Papadopoulos, you have a child, your breast feeding, and then you want to try to go to start I again. Believe so. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just give me a second. I'm checking breastfeeding egg donor. Um, a, the a breastfeeding egg donor? 
uh, could you explain what you exactly mean? So it's like you are wondering how long you need to. So you, you are breastfeeding and uh, you would like to go for egg donation. I understand again. So you yes. wonder how, okay, for how long you need to wait, yes, to be able to go for another cycle, let's say. I think. Um, oh, and with surrogate, okay. With. Uh, I do not understand the question. Now, we, uh, surrog surrog surrogacy is uh, forbidden in Spain. Mm -hmm. We do not have any experience with that. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's it's uh, okay. So it's just hard to to advise on such case. Yes. Um, uh, so sorry, it's just hard for me to exactly. That's uh, okay. No, it's okay. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you again for for that as well. And uh, now let me. We go to the next question. So you said you don't work with yes. synchronized cycles, yes. so you probably yes. do most of the cycles from frozen oocytes. Um, what about success rates when using frozen eggs? Are they really um, or similar on similar level than from fresh? No, that in the beginning that I uh, joined the clinic, I, I asked that question as well, and I have seen all the figures indeed. We um, have a great possibility to match a donor and a recipient because we have a lot of eggs frozen from donors. And we do that because the pregnancy rate and the live birth rate is as good in these days than with fresh uh, fertilized eggs. Joanne. And thank you so, so much once so again, for my answer yes for for the question as well as your um answer with it and someone is typing so let's give it a minute and see uh, yes. another question and of course just let me remind everyone that if you would like to ask anything at all just go ahead and type it in in the chat section and yes. Dr. Reed will be will be happy to help you out. In the meantime, uh, Dr. Greed, could you tell us a bit uh, on how nowadays uh, I understand the is there any like transfers? Are there any transfer done at Emer Clinic or at this point, or everything has been postponed until further notice as well? No, 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 no. Um, from um, the middle of March, uh, the transfers that were scheduled after half March, they have been cancelled. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, embryos are uh, frozen, so nothing happens with them. They can be frozen for a longer time if needed. Uh, in this moment, um, I'm working from home, as are my colleagues. A lot of our work is not only seeing patients at the clinic, but as well um, uh, making treatment plans, um, uh, filing um, results, uh, patients are sending and we are now busy uh, we are contacting every single patient uh, my assistant is scheduling a telephone call and I have spoken with now more than 50 patients by now one by one asking how they are how they are doing if they are healthy or not if they have any questions and we are now waiting uh, what the Spanish government will say about the measurements when they will be eased down and in what form and also the people in their own country are uh, subject to the low now in general the the measurements everywhere are the same but there are also of course the 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 the, the airlines have to fly so from the moment that it is that we can travel more freely, uh, then we will contact each and every of our patient so to um, inform them that they can begin. Also, I have a lot of uh, video conferences with uh, possible new patients who have a lot of questions, as we always do, if somebody wants to or is interested in the treatment, we all always offer them a free uh, conversation with me or by video conference or I often go to Holland and in Belgium 
in person so that I can listen to their story, listen to their questions and answer them as good as possible so that they have time to consider, as I explained now in my uh, presentation, mm -hmm. it is a difficult decision that you make to go for an egg donation or to stop your fertility journey. And so they have time for it. Yes, of course. Thank you for uh, for you know explaining us how it all works. I believe it is also something new for you. Yes, that you are just yes. uh, doing everything from home. So I'm sure it's a uh, it's um it works. Well, it works. It works. <laughs> That's one the most gets, important one gets part. One get accustomed to it. Yes. One accustomed to it. Yes. That's what we can do. I mean, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Well, actually, there is another question. So let me get to it. Uh, what is the average number of transfers to achieve pregnancy from a donation? Okay. We see uh, when we look at our uh, numbers, then we see that when uh, independent of age uh, of the patient, of the recipient, that um, when we uh, look at the patients who become pregnant after one, uh, after, the, after the transfer of one embryo, and when we take with that the group of patients who are pregnant after the second embryo transfer, and in each case I'm always talking about a single embryo transfer, then we see in our clinic a pregnancy rate of 75%. And when we are honest, then every pregnancy had, has a risk of 15% on a miscarriage. That means that we see in 60% of those cases a healthy child born. Okay, thank you so much again for Please. answering that question. Please. In the meantime, we have uh, another question and uh, we will be slowly finishing. So just wanted to add that if you have any questions left, this is your time, final call for that questions to so that you can type them in. Uh, OK, so just just uh, do it now if you have any left. And now let me go to this question. So my family advises me to wait with fertility treatments until the vaccine for COVID-19 is discovered. I wish to start ASAP after the lockdown is finished. What is your opinion on this? I am 38. Okay. Um, first of all, before answering that question, I want to emphasize that any question on my email address uh, or through your through IVF media is very welcome after it and I will try to answer them to my best knowledge and to my experience. Um, Anna, uh, my family advised me to wait with fertility treatments until the vaccine for COVID is discovered. So um, indeed now we know for several coronaviruses as influenza is um, that they do not harm um, a child in the womb of a mother. You can even have a vaccine for influenza when you're pregnant, whether you're two months pregnant or six months pregnant. From COVID-19, we do not know that. Um, as nobody knows, we do not know when there will be a, vac a vaccine. Uh, I do hope, as everyone, that it will be sooner than later. You are um, 38. It's, it's an age. You're already in a declining part of fertility. Um, it depends how we all behave in the near uh, future. If, that, if it will be a society where we keep our distance when we walk around with uh, masks on, um, I cannot say exactly you should do this or you can't do that. Uh, it, I think you can wait a bit longer, but we do not know if the, COVID, the, the coronavirus, COVID-19, harms the, the, the baby in the wound or, or not. Thank you. Sorry, <laughs> I have to say when I'm finished. Thank you again so much for um, for that uh, well explanation. We all hope that uh, it will be over 
pretty soon. I believe that everyone yes. here cannot wait for this to be over or at yes. least we'll get back to normal at least a bit. Uh, I think everyone is a bit normal. Yes. yes, a bit normal. <laughs> now we are just not, you know, we are not so, um, we are just focusing on those little things, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Perfect. Thank you so much. And so I just wanted to add that if you would like to get in touch with uh, Dr. Greet and get that consultation or anyone from the team, you know, uh, you can use this link as well as Dr. Greet already have said. Uh, there is an option for you there to just simply ask your question. It will be forwarded to the team straight away and they will be in touch with you very, very soon as well, I'm, I know. So, um, Yes, I believe that is that we will be finishing. Uh, but so one more time, if you if you wish to be in, get in touch with the with the team, you can use that link. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Greet, for joining our Stronger Together initiative. It has been a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for explaining all the details on egg donation and uh, also for your advice. And well, uh, it's definitely a pleasure to to have you here. And is there anything else you would like to add? Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank you. And there are some patients that, uh, okay, it's good to hear. Happy to hear that. And Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Uh, well, over and over again as well, because I know some of you have been uh, showing up here uh, quite often so thanks for for joining we are happy to to have you here and we are happy that we can at least uh, help you out a bit with such uh, events so as you know this is not the end uh, we will be back here on monday at 6 p.m uk time and then at 8 p.m uk time from monday to friday so I know some of you will be here. Uh, and of course, I encourage you to, to uh, simply join uh, our events and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, that way you will be up to date when new video is also uploaded. As you know, this is also being recorded. You will still have a chance to watch it again. Uh, pretty soon we will um, upload it on our site. And well, once again, thank you so much, Dr. Greet. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for your, your time. Assistance. Exactly. You. It's, it's good to really good to have you here. And uh, uh, just I will answer that uh, question. OK, uh, yeah. the recorded sessions are on my IVF answers dot com. So you will be able to find all the events right there. OK, and uh, just when I saw, I just send you the link and actually when uh, it will be uploaded, this session has will be uploaded soon with this link uh, above that you can see in the chat section. All of them will be uploaded. Of course, it's just taking some time. We have lots of those events right now, so they will be uploaded. Just give us a few days at least for, for this to, um, to, to be able to uh, to do it for you. All right. Uh, thank you so much and to uh, have a lovely evening, but also have a great weekend. Hope to see you on Monday as well. And well, good night, everyone. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye.